John Latsko here talking to you today about the Crescent Farm. For over six years now, we've been busy with uh, various manifestations of our landscape, which is just under an acre. We have been about saving you resources from the very beginning as part of our measure to bring to the public certain techniques. Saving water, we're about saving resources, but we've come to be so much more across the years. We actually have a multi-layered uh, mission statement at this point, engaging with the public, showing off uh, techniques for bringing in habitat, using native plants, again, saving water, actually um, showing alternatives to a uh, thirsty lawn. That's what we're about in our ground covers, but we're also a place for people and connecting people to plants and the people to the experiences of gardening. Crescent has been active for a year now, and we still carry on those fundamental features. We have become more and more what's called a regenerative landscape. That's about using the systems available in nature and duplicating them, copying them, sometimes amplifying their effect. And that's what we're doing here at the Crescent. We use and recycle and upcycle a lot of our materials from here at the Arboretum. And you can see from the results here in the pictures that our place is a showcase of beauty and habitat. We've learned a lot about what's going on in our landscape, just focusing on certain elements. It's about a connection of people to plants. It's also an opportunity for people to connect, right? Applying themselves in the landscape in the garden. We've hosted lots of young people and group efforts, group projects all along through the years. Crescent has been active for a while now, since 2013, with its first manifestation of a wildflower, um, a wildflower seeding called Wildflower LA. This is a visual of our Crescent. It's just under an acre, historic photo there. 2013 began, and we had our first infusion of grant money in 2015. These are examples of the ground covers that have brought many people armed with their questions to the crest and to learn how to save water and to create a, a, a dr dramatic and beautiful and effective alternative to a thirsty lawn. You'll see graphics like this during this uh, brief presentation. And if you're interested in more details, please visit our website, arboretum.org slash crescent for more details on what I talk about here in this very brief presentation and what I lead, allude to in some of the slides. You can see this is a, an example of how we save water in our dry creek bed. We have many topographical features that are meant to re-infiltrate water that's collected from rainwater and extra runoff. You can see some of these features here. Again, here are some techniques. You can see this very slide in the longer presentation online. We're very much about building soil. That's come to be key in everything that we do. It's a key element of a regenerative landscape, healthy soil. How is that done? Well, here's the key right here, mulch, over and over. We have some techniques that we've used to, to revamp and draw health back into our landscape using cardboard and mulch, sandwich mulching, cardboard mulching, sheet mulching. It's all the same here, and we've done it over and over. This is the end result. The key player here is the health, healthy fungi that interact with plant roots, bringing and, 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 and currenting nutrients and moisture forth across the, across the landscape. Bringing those nutrients and those bits of moisture to plants directly, a healthy soil saves you resources, saves you water, saves you money. Mycorrhizae is the relationship between that fungi and the plants. We have a mycorrhizal situation all over our earth crescent. Here's an example of the cardboard mulching. More examples. Easy to see what we do there at the Crescent as the landscape is, is circumscribed by the roadway. So it's, it's easy to see at, in any portion of the landscape right from the roadway while we can and kind of spy on our work. Healthy soil, this is what it looks like after cardboard manifestation with the mulch. It's about beauty as well. The center of our, our Crescent is filled with Mediterranean appropriate plants. All of them are labeled. Some of them are quite popular. And we also offer a bunch of grasses too, native and climate appropriate ornamental grasses. Come check out our grass display. It's really beautiful. We have been from the beginning and are again right now in this season in the spring about wildflowers. We have a meadow attached inside a crescent. There's details on how to create a successful meadow again online in the longer presentation. 
Here are some examples of the beautiful wildflowers that repeatedly come up every year as they cell feed, they naturalize. The wildflower meadow is a very important component of our crescent. It attracts a lot of attention and it is in incredibly rich in providing habitat. We've seen lots of creatures that have been observed. This is a, an early view of the meadow before the wildflower display. Right now that's full of puppies. And here's one of our guests, a longhorn bee that was discovered nearby. We have put a new emphasis on native bees, especially as we've created habitat and continue to enrich that opportunity. We've done observations and created landscapes and portions of the gardens directly to attract the hordes of native bees available in California. This is part of the bee garden we put in and intentionally collecting and focusing on those native bees, early views of it. As it progresses, we had our students help put in the, the garden itself. Little note here, while we're busy with mulch, there are areas that need to be clean of debris that, that the bees who nest in, the, in underground are available. Those areas are available for them to do nesting. We've learned such things as we've learned more about the bees. Here you have an example of a mason bee nursery or bee hotel. More pictures of the bee plants in the bee garden. Again, most are labeled. There's a lot of signage in this area too that shows the outline of the bee garden. Come see how beautiful it is, especially in this. Uh... Here's one of our volunteers doing some direct observation on the buckwheat about the bees. And here's Joe Hickman, who is on Instagram as bsip, at bsip. She is a regular feature of our craft and as she's out often photographing and cataloging the native bees. And we're up to almost 40 ID species. Kids, here are kids in our laboratory here at the Arboretum who have just returned from a visit out to the Crescent gathering samples and looking at bees and their uh, source food plants. This is Mason Bee Baby outside of the nursery for the bee, native wild sunflower. And here are some examples of some of the plants that have attracted the native bees on our landscape that continue, continue to uh, expand. Again, this information is available online. This is a, a section of our hugel, densely planted with native, um, native uh, flowering shrubs. And the note here is that if you have the opportunity for supplying habitat in your own home landscape, come and see how we do it on a small scale and we can kind of cue you into doing the same thing at home. These are views of our fruit orchard. We have an arid based fruit orchard as part of, as a component inside of our uh, very dense acre. And this is some of the heights of what we get to eat as farmers and volunteers attached to the Crescent Farm. A glorious jujube called gin, just beautiful. And as you can see, it looks delicious. Panay fig is very popular. And we have our food forest where we grow our vegetables, mainly focused on heirloom varieties and ones of cultural interest like these bottle gourds. You can see we have quite an array of available food. And again, who gets to eat it but our volunteers who work diligently at making sure everything comes out healthy and delicious. These are some of our high school volunteers in the food forest one Saturday. And you can see this is during COVID times, so everybody's masked and safe. One of the food forests that tends to leak out into the entire landscape is our amaranth. And happily, we are, we are able to accommodate this, this plant as it spreads all over the crescent and gains a lot of attention. A huge and important, valuable food plant, actually considered a superfood. Amaranth grain is used in protein, and the leaves, when tender, are high in iron as well, sauteed. So views of our amaranth and a few rogue players there. We have lots of volunteers on hand always, and a couple of our volunteers have been paid interns over the summer break for high school students. This has been a great opportunity, and a lot of folks have become very attached to the Crescent and continually continue to be attached after they uh, put in their service. Here we have a ceremony of um, harvest. Um, it's the harvest of the amaranth grain here, led by a group from Guatemala who will gather a special workshop for us. We have workshops like this uh, through the Crescent through the year. Here a lot are available online and we hope to put together um, uh, physical uh, events too later in the year, perhaps. Here is Bee Box building with uh, Boy Scouts. Here is Cobb bench making project that we had. And you can see our Cobb bench on site is. 
made out of straw and clay and sand. And, and here's another event where we were mosaicing stepping stones. So the events happen and there's lots of people that are connected to the Crescent. Again, pictures of our interns, high school interns over the years. It's easy to get involved. You might inquire through, through the website or in person here at the entrance gates when if you're interested. This one is in the middle of the Arboretum, just shy of an acre. It's just west of the historic core. It's worth taking a peek at right now in the spring, especially when our wildflowers are, are quite a bloom right now. Quite exciting. We thank everybody that's always been involved in the Crescent of the years, and we're happy to have our audience expand as that's very exciting and then gives us more possibility to do more. We concentrate on a lot of efforts to save you resources and to help inspire the creation of healthy habitat and healthy soil throughout all of our gardens. We thank the W. Heck Foundation and everybody affiliated with the Crescent. I'm John Latko, and I'm here for the Crescent, and I thank you for your time. Come visit us soon at Crescent Farm at the Arboretum.